Hey there everyone and welcome back again to the Flutter series. My name is Itesh and let's move forward. In this video, I will walk you through how you can install Flutter on a Mac computer, how you can configure that. Apart from that, we will also learn how we are going to configure our Android Studio as well as our iOS devices, uh, I, our Xcode, so that we can test our iPhones and apps on iOS basically. So let's move forward. It's actually a very simple, very straightforward process for Mac. It's not very much complicated. And in fact, ju you just need some tools to download. So we've already seen the setup for the Windows. Uh, one more thing, we haven't yet seen the VS Code setup. We have just seen the installation of it. So it might give you a little bit errors in case you are on a Windows. So don't worry about that. We are going to fix all of that. So let's move forward. Now we are on a Mac. So we need to learn how we can install Flutter on a Mac. It's not installation. It's basically a setup of some files. And then we are going to walk through with the setup of Android and we're going to look for the Xcode. Don't worry, we will not be writing any code in Xcode. We will be using VS Code for this entire series. So let's move forward. Now, one very good place to get started is flutter.io. So just go to there and we are going to click on get started. This time we are on a Mac. So just click on that. Now you don't need to read all of this, all these systems and what we are going to use, what we are not going to use and all these things. Just go ahead and directly download this uh, flutter Mac uh, beta zip, whatever that is. And once you extract that, it's going to give you a folder which is going to look like this one. So this is what I'm having on my desktop. I will be keeping it on my desktop. So wherever you download this and extract this and wherever we are going to make an entry in our system of this file location, you need to keep it there. So keep it somewhere safe where you think it's not going to be bothering you much. It just needs to be there. These are some set of files. Consider this as simple application. So there we go. And now what we need to do is we need to export our path, but I won't be saying that you need to export it just like this because this is temporary one. Surely it's going to work, but as soon as you are going to close your terminal, it's not going to work. So we need something uh, much more, uh, much more awesome than this. So let me walk you through. First of all, just uh, I hope everybody has downloaded the Flutter and is have placed that on a very safe place where you can find it. So just open up your terminal and mine is going to open up. Uh, where is it? There we go. Okay. Now what you need to do is you need to travel to the path where you have installed or un unzipped your Flutter. In my case, it's on my desktop and it's on to the Flutter. So there we go. It is it up here. Now in this case, you can notice that it says, hey, wherever the path of Flutter is, you need to just go into that and put a bin and then a dollar sign, dollar path, colon sign and a dollar path. So how you can get this exact same path? The, the easiest way to do so is PWD. That stands for present working directory. So what you need to do is just make sure you copy this exact same path. So just copy it somewhere and I'm going to walk you through that. What is the exact command that you have to write? So I'm going to fire up my sublime text uh, just to show you the stuff. Okay. So the exact command that you have to type on your terminal is export. Then you have to say path all in caps, then equal sign. And then you have to just copy and paste literally what we have copied just now from the terminal. And then you have to say slash bin and then a colon sign. Let me expand that a little bit. And then you have to say a dollar sign and then path all in caps. So this is the exact thing that we want to run on our terminal. But the problem is with this run of the command, it's not persistent. It's just temporary. And as soon as we close our terminal, it's going to be just gone. So we may we want to make a permanent entry in our system for that. And for the Mac and Linux, there is a one file in which you want to make an entry. So we're going to just skipping this uh, for a moment. We will be running all of that. First of all, we want to make this onto a permanent path. So it says uh, there is a file in your system, which is dot bash. And this bash profile is the place where you want to make this entry. Again, uh, this is almost exactly same. It's export path and then the plot to the entire flutter bin dollar path. So this is the exact same command that we are having. So now that we have this command, we just want to paste that in a file. So how we're going to find that file? That's the important question. Now for that, I'm going to give you one more command. So far in the Linux, we have learned about ls command, which lists all the things. But in the Linux and the Mac, there is one more command that says ls space hyphen la. Now this gives you way more file than what you have expected. Here we just see these ones, but here we can see more files which are having a dot extension like dot git ignore, dot github and all of that. Now 
it is asking us for a file name which says .bash. By default, all the dot .files are hidden. So we need to find this dot .bash profile. So where you can find that? It's usually available in just type a CD. You will be in your home directory automatically. This tilde sign is a symbol of that. And when you'll be doing ls space hyphen la, you might see a bash file. You might not see a bash file. Very important. So in my case, it's a dot .bash underscore profile. In your case, it might not be there, okay? No worries, sometimes this file is not there, sometimes this file is being created. What you have to do, you have to create this file. So how you can create this file? What you have to do is, let me just control L, is we're gonna be using a command that says VIM. Now don't worry, Flutter is not that much complicated. These are some of the settings that we have to do just one time. So what we'll be doing is VIM, which is an editor. You can use Nano as well, others as well. And then you have to write, make sure you're in the right directory, okay? You are into this guy. In case you want to be double check, just put a CD and hit enter. So we're gonna be using an editor that says VIM. And then we will be creating a file that says dot bash underscore profile. Make sure you don't make any typo in case you are not aware of it or what file should I be creating. Just make sure it matches exactly like this dot bash. It should not be like dollar home something. No, we don't need to do that. We just want to go into CD and then type it dot bash underscore profile. Now the advantage of the Vim is if this file exists, that's good. If that file doesn't exist, Vim is going to create one for you. So we're going to hit enter and there we go. Now my file is already having some settings. Yours might not be there. All you have to do is paste this entire line. Now pasting is not so easy in the Vim because if you'll be try if you'll try to write anything, it's not going to allow you to write. So once you have opened a file, it might be having all tilde is here onto your file. What you have to do is press I on your keyboard. I is a shortcut for going into insert mode of Vim. I know Vim is not that much fancy, but it's what it is. And then once you're into this, now you will be able to type anything. So just write this, uh, wherever you are, just write this exact same command, export and something, whatever we have uh, just written there. You can even pause the video and just copy this command. Export path equals your name. Don't use just copy and paste mine one and then this guy, okay? So once you have written that command properly, now we need to save and quit this file and it's not that much easy in the Vim. So just press escape once then put the colon sign and then W and Q. You can see that at the bottom. This stands for write and quit and then hit enter. Okay, I know this is a little bit complicated but feel free to use any other method or any other editor as well, nano or something. I prefer you just follow me, that's actually a better way. Okay, now once you have done this, what you need to do is you need to restart your terminal and that is super easy. Just close that and make sure you quit it completely and then fire that up again, terminal. Now, just type a few words, a few characters from the Flutter F, let's just say Flutter, and I'm gonna hit my tab key. If it auto completes there, that means job done. Now we're gonna do, uh, this is like the whole setup. And yes, literally that's the whole setup for the Flutter. Just make an entry in the file and that's it. Make sure you take care that wherever you have kept the Flutter directory, you don't move it. Once you move it, that entry in your file is no longer valid. Okay, so that is all done. Now we need to look up how we can uh, set up some of the things. So we need to configure our Xcode and Android Studio or just one if you like. Now one more recommendation that I would like to give you, it's not compulsory, but go onto this website brew.sh and just copy paste this line, whatever that is, and paste it in your terminal. It's going to install brew on your system. We might need that in the future. So make sure you just go ahead. It's literally, that's it, you just copy this uh, go to your terminal and you just paste that. So I'm gonna just copy this and just go up here and paste that and hit enter. That's it, it's gonna do it some of the stuff and you just want to just keep doing its stuff, that's it. Okay, that's first recommendation. Now first, let's go ahead and talk about uh, how we can configure our iOS device. So fire up your app store, you might be familiar with that and just type for Xcode. It's a very big file, around 5.5 GBs. Uh, it's it gonna might take a little bit while to download. So once it get download, just uh, I agree, yes, okay, whatever it asks for password, just give it that, it's totally safe, it's from Apple, so no, no big deal there. So you can just go ahead, open that up, and that's it. That's the first setup installation process that we are gonna have. So this is for, and that's it, this is for iOS. And for the Android, you might want to download this Android Studio. Click, click, next, yes, I agree, okay, install. 
And yes, I totally agree there. And that's it. Now, once you have done that, what you'd really want to do is fire up the Xcode or Xcode beta in case you are working on iOS 12 as well. That is also totally fine. So uh, let me open that up. Where is my Xcode beta? There we go, here is mine. So you're gonna see something like this. Until and unless you see something like this, make sure whatever the error it gives or it asks you to install any other tools as well, just go ahead and install that. Okay, so that's it, that's all we want to do. Now comes up to the Flutter setting part. Let me just hit Control L to delete all of that. Okay, now we want to run a test command so that we can see that whether everything is good or not in our system. So what we want to do is simply we want to check Flutter and we want to give a command of flutter uh, doctor. There we go. Once we are going to run the command, it's gonna check out all the things that whether things are properly installed on our system or not. Now let me show you what error it can give you. It's gonna take a little bit while to do its stuff. Now let me open that up. Uh, there we go. And my flutter needed an upgrade. So uh, we can run a flutter upgrade command uh, so that it, gives, uh, it gets updated. I highly recommend to do so. I will be doing that just after this video. And this is the screenshot that I took from my terminal and it gave me these errors. Uh, this error says lib i mobile device and all these are not installed. And notice here it says to install run the following command brew install hyphen hyphen capital head lib i mobile device. Remember I asked you that brew should be installed on your system. This brew is going to take care of the rest of the things for you. So there we go. You can just run this command first and then this brew install i device installer then and then brew install iOS deploy. And that's it, three commands, and it's gonna resolve those error for you. Surely there will be still errors, like Android Studio Flutter plugin is not installed or Dart plugin is not installed. We don't want to worry about that. It's gonna be taken care of later on. Okay, so this is the error screenshot I have taken. Right now it says all good, iOS toolchain and everything is installed. It's gonna give you error if something is missing on you, okay? So there we go, we are all good. Make sure you also run Flutter upgrade in case your Flutter is showing you some things. Now, one more thing before we just go off, it says connected device, no device available. In order to make sure that Flutter actually runs on any of the device, you can either plug on, plug on your original device. It can be an iPhone or an Android. For Android, you just need to unlock the developer option. For iOS, there is a little bit of provisioning profile and stuff, which we will walk through later on in the course. But there is a better way of having it. In case you have installed Xcode properly, just type a command that is open simulator or open a simulator. Uh, it's a really easy way, open dash a simulator. And once you hit that command, it's gonna open up a simulator on your system. Let me show where my simulator is, there we go. And it's gonna give you a simulator for you. Okay, and it's gonna take a little bit while to just go ahead and up and running here. So let me fast forward this video till it just gets up and running. Okay, so now that my iPhone 10, the latest one is up and running, now we can run the command flutter doctor again. Obviously it's gonna give me prompt that, hey, I should upgrade, but it's not a big issue. We can just fix that later on. Now I want to just run a flutter doctor and it's gonna say that, hey, there is one device which is up and running and there we go no issues found and we have connected one device if you'll be connecting your android phone or ios or a simulator from android as well that is totally fine we just need one device any device will work at all fine there is no problem like hey you are running your uh, test cases or you are running all of your uh, code on an iphone it's not going to work on android or, or you are running all of your code in android you're, it's not going to work in ios flutter is not like that flutter you can run your code whatever the device you prefer. And obviously I am on limited uh, memory stuff, don't want to heat up my computer because running an iOS and Android and all to recording setup, it can be a little bit too much. So I would be just running all the time just one device. It can be like a coin toss decision, any one of them. And I recommend doing the similar thing for you as well. So these are the whole uh, scenario of how you can install uh, Flutter as well as Xcode and as well as uh, your, iOS, your Android as well. So I guess now we are all done and we are all on the same page. Now one more thing before we go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just open up uh, terminal in case you are still not on this. Just go ahead 
and download VS Code, Visual Studio Code. I know it comes from Microsoft and you might have some opinion about it, but don't worry, this is one of the really great editor, very renowned and reliable in the entire industry. So go ahead and download that. We will learn how we can install and configure that in the later video. Installation is actually simple, just drag and drop uh, into your applications. For Windows, it's just next, next, I agree, okay. But in the next video, we are going to learn how we can configure VS Code and we are going to run our very first Hello World application in Flutter. So now that installation is complete, I hope you are ready to rock and roll in the world of Flutter. Let me know in the comment section that if you are enjoying this series, if you want more such videos, make sure you keep sharing the videos and that's the only motivation I, I really want for this series. Thank you so much for watching and let's catch up in the next video.